Hey guys, so this is a video I really want to make for a while now because dynamic range always fascinated me. As you know, dynamic range is how many stops of lights can be detected by a sensor. The Fuji S3 and the S5 that share the same sensor are known for this amazing dynamic range capabilities. They're also known for great Fuji colors and pleasing skin tones, but that's not what I want to talk to you about in this video. Tom Bauer made a video wherein he compared the crop sensor Fuji S5 to his full frame Nikon D700, in which Fuji clearly came out on top. Now you may argue that it's obvious, I mean if you look at the DxO ratings, uh, we can see that the Nikon camera has a range of 12.12 EV stops of lights, whereas the Fuji sensor peaks at 13.5 EV. But why not compare it to the Dynamic Range King, the DA10? Unfortunately, I couldn't get my hands on a copy of that. So I went with the full frame Nikon D750. There's a difference of 0.3 EV, but it's negligible, I would say. So I shot these pictures at a base ISO of 100 to test them at their best dynamic range. So at perfect exposure, there isn't any difference except for the Fuji colors, which really stand out. However, moving to a darker exposure, we see that the Fuji is exposing two thirds of a stop darker, but that may be due to the changing weather conditions. However, if we post process them, there's no difference between them. At 4,000th of a second, we can see that they're both quite similar in exposure. But when trying to match the exposure, we see that the Nikon did a phenomenal job. While the Fuji is showing some weird colors that shouldn't be there, and also the noise is very significant. Having said that, I honestly believe this is due to a processor, as the color shift in Lightroom briefly disappears as to show me that it's purely how Lightroom thinks this picture should be rendered. Going on to the spectrum of overexposing the picture, we see that the Fuji renders this quite decently, with obvious blown highlights being rendered a bit magenta. This again can be attributed to the processor rather than the RAW file. Nikon on the other hand has more information that is lost in this picture while editing. In this picture I edited using the exposure and the contrast slider, however only using the exposure slider like I did with the Fuji it would lead to this. In another example, the exposures were evenly matched and I tried to see if I could get more shadow information while the exposure was boosted by two stops, but the only thing I see is the color difference between those two cameras. I won't claim that one or the other camera has better dynamic range, because I simply do not know. I don't know if there are better cameras with better dynamic range. I am however amazed at how well this decade old Fuji camera still stands strong. And I can wholeheartedly recommend this camera as a cheap camera for landscape photographers and for portrait photographers too. At this product life cycle stage, the camera holds its value. So if you were to buy a camera, you could most probably get your money back. In fact, I recently bought and sold mine for a profit. It's such a shame that Fuji stopped making these cameras. I can only imagine what Fuji could have achieved if it were still invested in making such amazing DSLRs.